This is the Motor Cop Chronicles podcast with the Midweek News. Join your hosts, Iceman and Holstera, two law enforcement professionals ready to offer their unfiltered opinions on the latest news from the world of law enforcement. No filters, no edits. So be warned, the content may be upsetting to some listeners. Sit down and hold up. This may get a little bumpy. Welcome to Motor Cop Chronicles Midweek News that we are recording before it's midweek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, this, I, I like it. I think this is the first midweek news uh, we've done. When I first started, I don't know. I don't think they were live, but this is the first one we've done in the, probably feels like about a year at least. That hadn't been. That's not live. No, yeah, I remember back when you used to do it, and you were green screening a mannequin. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming a long way. A little but, bit, yeah. This is uh pre-recorded obviously but uh no nah, not gonna be around the studio or nothing i'm probably gonna be resting you gotta up. go do some rodeo i'm probably gonna be resting up at the time this releases uh to do the competition thursday morning uh good news is i just talked to somebody and i'm gonna have a should have a guest for uh, this Sunday's episode, uh, it's going to come in Friday and uh, talk about it. We're going to figure out a nickname for him. He is a previous lieutenant with the sheriff's office, no longer in law enforcement. But, uh, I know this man personally. And he does. Uh, he should have a lot of funny stories, probably some about me, too, because we worked together for a little while. So He ain't the, he ain't this first story we got, is he? No, no, I don't know anyone in this state. So uh, before we started, <laughs> y'all go like and subscribe, uh, write a review on Apple. I will shout it out. Uh, five stars. Uh, share it with your friends. Uh, same thing on Facebook and YouTube and those other platforms. Like and subscribe. Share it. Uh, helps with the algorithm. Uh, and if you, especially if you got any friends that don't like cops, make sure you share <laughs> it with them. And if you, because uh, they would love our podcast. And if you have, uh, if you ever want a T-shirt, a podcast, mouse pads, all kind of other different merchandise. Uh, Go to the Motor Cop Chronicles uh, Etsy store. Check it out. I have everything priced extremely low. I'm not on there trying to make money just to get the logo out. Hell yeah, you can get a whole new wardrobe. To (laughs) complete, uh, just just, to get us a little bit bigger. But other than that, let's get this uh, shit show rolling, huh? You want to read the first one? A a little bit bigger. I've been working on that for years, and them pills don't work. Anyway. Uh, so we got a warrant on an off-duty detective who wore a utility vest, pulled gun on a citizen in a road raided incident. So I guess he wanted to play construction worker. Colin Snyder was arrested on two counts of assault with a deadly weapon and one count of oppression. Really? That's a law now? No, one count of oppression under the color of law. I guess it sounds kind of like, uh, basically he's, uh, restricting somebody's civil rights under the color, color of law. I don't know. I never went to school for that. I figured you did. Uh, (laughs) Under the color of law in connection with May 19 incident. All right. So Las Vegas, Nevada, an off-duty officer with Las Vegas Metro uh, reportedly drew his gun on a citizen after a road rage incident in May, according to a warrant from the department. Colin Snyder was arrested on two counts of assault with a deadly weapon and one count of oppression under the color of law. Uh, in connection with the incident that occurred May 19th. Boy, that's redundant. Uh, Las Vegas Metro was called around 2 p.m. that day to report to a man pointing a gun at a woman in front of her home. The caller said that the person identified themselves as the police officer, and she thought he might be impersonating law enforcement, the warrant said. Snyder also reportedly called uh, Las Vegas Metro dispatch, saying a driver in the area, Almost hit him head on. Snyder later told police he couldn't let the incident go because it's my neighborhood and turned his vehicle around and confronted the driver. Crazy. He, he, he owns a neighborhood. He must be. He rich. does. He, he must said, be fucking rich to be able to own a whole neighborhood. Las Vegas PD must be paying good. <laughs> well, you know, damn well, there's those cops that are like, this is my road. And I'm like, no, 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 it's not. No. I mean, you're there to enforce the law, but it ain't your fucking road. You know what's funny uh, about this story? 
is, is all right. He's totally if he if he did this, if he like got pissed off at this woman, he's his personal truck. Then went home, got his police unmarked um, police unit, put his uh, tack vest on, and went over there and threatened her. Okay, that, that he did. not He put a fucking traffic vest. No, I think it was his tack vest that said police. Huh? I don't know. I thought he put his tack vest on and said police. Not they don't vest. specify. They they just say that he put a. Uh, uh, I thought they said a traffic vest. I'm trying to see if I can see it. Yeah, you go ahead. You learn to see if you can read. It said wearing his. Uh, poli- it says his policed vest. So I'm taking that as his tack vest because most detectives have tack vest. I know ours do. It well, says, he it says claimed police the driver. Vest. He claimed the driver had chased him down, so he went to his home nearby and got his unmarked police vehicle. What the fuck? The, uh, Snyder also admitted to wearing his police vest, according to, uh, yeah, Las Vegas. Uh, Snyder eventually said he didn't want to explain the incident further due to his union advising him not to. That right there tells you he fucked up. The warrant said Snyder told police he wanted to press charges against the woman for damaging his vehicle, but couldn't confirm if the indention near his gas cap was old or new, court documents stated. Uh, the other driver had a different account. The court documents showed. Yeah, this guy's fucking stupid. It, let me tell you, if you got enough time to drive your happy ass home, jump into your police vehicle, throw your vest on, and then go chase her down, the incident's over, brother. Let well, it go. So if, he, if she actually made contact with him <clears> and <throat> wouldn't stop, well, I would have called the police department right then and said, look, I somebody hit me and they're not stopping. I'm going to follow them. Send me a unit over here. Here's their license plate. I'm not going to go home and get my unit and go back. No. No, he could have done it in his POV and just stayed in the fucking car and told dispatch, hey, uh, Betty Joe fucking just ran my car. Uh, y'all need to send a unit out, 1018, because this bitch is not stopping. Yeah, he, he fucked all kind of shit up. He's stupid. And you know damn well his union rep is like, oh, God. Well, he, said, he, he said he started to give a statement and a story, and his union uh, rep told me to shut up. So. Oh, yeah, my union <laughs> rep notoriously told me. It's like, don't say shit until we get there. But they also have surveillance video in the area that showed him activate his police sirens on his car for eight seconds during this altercation as he drove down the street. God. Uh, they're saying that the... The confrontation was ultimately created by Snyder because he engaged. He did. I mean, the incident was over, and then he came back and reengaged in it. What? What I think. Right. What also, though, I think is uh, kind of stupid in the story is the uh, victim. Also, because if you remember in the story, she said uh, that she was uh, this guy was um, tailgating her and driving aggressively, so she got scared and slammed on her brakes and got out of the car and confronted him. If you're scared. You're not going to stop. You don't get out of the car and confront nobody. You're not going to stop and then get out and confront someone if you're scared. If you're scared, you're going to try to get the hell away from that person. So, yeah. bullshit on her part for that part. Okay, that's a lie. She was not scared or she would not have confronted this person. Him, he's just a fucking idiot. He let the power of his uh, position badge. and his badge go way over his head and Honestly, I mean, this dude was a detective too, so he like he was no rookie cop. But he, uh, he obviously, uh, he had a power trip ego thing going on. Probably shouldn't have been wearing a badge, and hopefully never will again. Because it's people like this they that, give us all bad that names. abuse their powers that give police a bad name. So yes, he needs to be uh, stripped of his uh, duties and powers because if you're going to use it like that, let me tell you what I. Uh, Bam, my wife tells me all the time that I have very bad road rage. Uh, I don't attack people. I don't point guns at people. I found my road rage consists of uh, me cussing someone out inside my car with the windows closed and they can't hear it. And then I feel better after it. The person got cussed out. I feel better and they don't know about it, okay? (laughs) Because she tells me, why you you hollering and cussing? They can't hear you. I said, it makes me feel better. So... So I've, you know, I've good chance somebody down the road. I've cussed a lot of people out that have no idea that I cussed them out. But it makes me feel better. That's my extent of my road rage. Okay, 
Because there's a lot of people out there that should not have driver's license. Like, I, if the, the way they drive, I don't know how they even knew how to tie their own damn shoes, okay? Uh, people are in a hurry. They're on their phones. Uh, they drive extremely aggressively. Uh, I need to get one of them little personal dash cameras. I could probably have a whole YouTube channel myself just going back and forth to work to watch it the way people drive. I'm like, yeah, they're about to crash. Or, oh, Jesus. I mean, it's horrible. It's horrible. I was thinking the other day, God, just somebody, uh, somebody passed me three times coming home from work okay and three like, times yeah. yeah they passed me three times how did this happen you ask right <laughs> because i i stayed in the lane i was in because the way i need to get i'm all the way in the left lane baton rouge rush hour traffic which is hellacious uh go look it up on google it, it's fucking horrible it's probably one some yeah of the worst, it's it's, probably, it's probably feeding the, the uh the reason for the gunshots probably, probably some of the worst in the united states it's horrible uh our engineers were completely idiots who have built our interstate system but regardless of the fact uh like i said when the same person passed me three times it's because i stayed in my same lane going along putting you know scoot here drive a little ways go over because they were be bopping in and out of lanes and what happened with the oh this lane's moving so they were in them lane jumper so i'd end up staying in my lane i ended up passing them up again because they were stuck in another lane that's now not moving but they didn't get an opportunity and they'd speed up be bop next thing you know here they go again and then they get stuck again and here i go pass them up again just total it, it they're idiots i mean where did they get they did all this maneuver and jockey and possibly could have caused the crash piss people off for what Pass, they passed me three times. That means I passed them back up three times. So, I mean, they're just they're fucking idiots. They're idiots. So, just think about that when you're in traffic. Just because you're in one lane and the next lane starts moving a little bit quicker does not necessarily mean that that's the faster lane. That means other people in that lane might have uh, jumped in the other lane. Just stay where you're at. If it's that bad of traffic, it's, you're going to move eventually. Be bopping in and out of lanes is not going to get you anywhere, anywhere quicker. But this guy here is a complete idiot and uh i hate talking bad about other cops but like i said before call it how i see it it's my opinion i think yeah, there's opinion law enforcement not law enforcement you're gonna do stupid shit and i'm gonna call you out on it okay and this, guy, this guy's a fucking idiot cop or no cop he, he's an idiot and should not be wearing a badge so bye-bye sir well the bad thing about it is once again he's if he's got that union rep He's probably not getting fired. He's going to get like a month off paid, and he's going to go back to work. Even with the charges? Yeah. Well, you, It is very my, fucking my, hard to fire well, a union police well, officer. My opinion, he needs to be stripped of his uh, duties. He should not be wearing a badge because this guy's got a definite uh, power trip going oh, on. Oh, he's here. got, yep, power trip, and it's going to cause a fucking lawsuit on the agency. You know yeah. that's right. Or he's going to end but, up uh, doing something else that he shouldn't be doing. That's probably the first time he did this shit, first time he got caught. Yeah, it's the first time he got caught. This next story, Grady Judge would say, yep, we shot him a lot. <laughs> yes, a man firing a weapon shot and killed by a Cobb County uh, officer, police said. The man's next-door neighbor said this young, his young daughter and parents were home <laughs> when the shooting happened. This was in uh, Maybelline Mableton, Georgia. The Georgia Bureau of Investigations is looking to a shooting involving a Cobb County police that left one man dead on Friday. The Cobb County Police Department said officers were sent to a domestic disturbance on Heritage Lakes Court just after 11.30 a.m. I do not like domestics. They're extremely dangerous and uh, they're just hard to deal with because you can be arresting a guy that just beat the hell out of a woman. And, and the woman sudden, will turn around and shoot your ass. And all of a sudden, the woman will shoot you or attack you for arresting a guy that just damn near beat her to death. Uh, because that's her meal ticket. Yes. Police said a man armed with a gun was making threats towards other people at the location. Once they arrived, police added that the man began shooting inside the residence. That's when officers said they shot back, killing the suspect. Cobb County Police added that no officers were injured during the shooting. Well, that's a good thing. I happened to look out the front door and saw a bunch of police in my backyard. Reginald Walden, who lives next door to the home, explained. I said, hey, 12, get the fuck out of my yard. You're trespassing. <laughs> no, but, but I, that would not surprise me that that would happen. Uh, his wife, Gerald, Dr General, I don't know how to say her name. Uh, Grindel. Grindel. Okay, thank you very much there, Sarah, for that correction. <laughs> Noted it. And she added that in addition to police, she saw a bunch of AR-15s. So the police came into the yard, and then they called for backup, and the AR-15s come running in behind them. Because <laughs> uh, she said, 
besides, in addition to the police, she saw a bunch of AR-15s. All right, uh, uh, this is uh, a, a 6528 to dispatch. Uh, could you please uh, dispatch the AR-15 squad out here? And I'll sit here <laughs> and hear how the little AR-15s come running. Yes, we're here. That's how I figure AR-15 would sound like a little squeaky. And voice. then they yes, shot him a lot. Yep, yep. The, the AR-15s are here. Then she heard a bunch of screaming and yelling. All right, we're here. We're AR-15. You better give up or, or we're going to shoot you. Then these cops are going to come over there and arrest your ass. And okay, then you're going to be Mick. You're gonna be Mick dead. I believe the uh, the cops probably had the AR-15s. Okay, <laughs> the, way, the way they make it sound is the cops were there, then the AR-15s just magically just showed up. God, people need to think about it. That was before she saw police at their front door. I'm opening my front door, and they're like, "You can't go anywhere." Then I'm like, "Oh my." god i'm naked and i see his mom his daughter and everybody being ushered out of the house and they had clothes on and i was naked no, <laughs> they did not say that mad living here i see all kinds of sc- I, I hear all kinds of screaming and yelling and hollering and then i hear two gunshots pew pew she said uh she explained that the man lived at the home with his young daughter and his parents were visiting at the time of the shooting his mom hollered at him, told him he needed to clean it up his messy room and wash the clothes, and he got mad. Uh, he was trying to get it right. What? He was trying to get it right. W- w- was he wrong? Uh, <coughs> so, I don't know. Do, do, do these people have uh, ed- 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 editors no. that read this shit before? No, and I've said that before. Sometimes these fucking stories are wrote by, like, fucking three-year-olds. He was trying because to Because <laughs> I, I read a story once that had like the three times in a row. He loved his daughter, loved her so much. I heard her screaming. She was screaming, I can't live without my dad. Well, you are. Is this Alabama? No, this is uh, Georgia. I can't do it without my cousin. This is Georgia. The Waldens. Oh, my God. <laughs> They live next door to Walton. The Waldens <laughs> said their John boy, their next door neighbor, came over around 2 a.m. But after he started acting erratically, they asked him to leave. Hey, look, you're 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 acting like a crazy motherfucker. You're gonna have to go. Yeah, Thank stop acting erratic. Uh, he was starting to get a little aggressive, brandishing his gun and doing a little of a crip sign. Okay, uh, maybe that would have been a sign if he was uh, brandishing a gun at you. Mate, why didn't you call the cops? Yeah, he, he was having, we'll, <laughs> You know as well as I do that it, some of these neighborhoods, you can do some atrocious and they shit. They will not call the cops. It don't matter. You can nope. rape somebody in the middle of the street and they can see you and they're not going to call the cops and they're going to say nothing. That's why And when we show is. up and start asking questions, they I say, I didn't nothing. do nothing. Yep. Yep. Fucking bullshit. Yep. That's why the crime is so damn high exactly. in those neighborhoods. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and you have some neighborhoods, if you go outside and take a shit in the road, there everybody around is going to tell on your fucking ass that you're going to jail. <laughs> Depends on where yep. you live. Uh, he was having some financial problems. Uh, that means he was a lazy fucker and didn't have a job, most likely, because there's jobs Sell that AR-15. Let, let, let me tell you what. Let me tell you what. No, and I'm not bashing on nobody. Don't get me wrong on this statement. Uh mcdonald's or burger king or, or any other type of jobs and it's maybe not that prestigious of a job but let me tell you what i was raised up uh and if it came down to it and i was out of work and that's what i could find quickly i would be flipping hamburgers while i was looking for a better job or i'd be flipping hamburgers at two different places i'm going to do what i have to do to put food to in. I'm going to put to, to support my family. I'm going to do every fucking thing I can do. That's legal. I'm not going to go out there and do legal. There's enough legal shit you can do. You have to bust your ass maybe five times as hard as you would have to if you were doing something illegal. But I'm going to do it legally to support my family, no matter how demeaning or how above the job I think I may be. But I'm going to make my money legally to support my family. That's what a man does, okay? So all these people out here, oh, I'm struggling, I can't find a job. No, you ain't look. If you can't find a job, because you ain't looking hard enough, okay? No, it's because they don't want to fucking work. Yeah, or you don't want to work. You aren't looking or you don't want to work. I don't want to hear an excuse. You can find something. You can find something. All righty. Uh-oh. Uh, we, what? We got dead people at the most fucking happiest prison on earth. What? Well, can I finish this story? You skipping around? <laughs> yeah, you go won. ahead, finish it. You're skipping around. <clears throat> Calm down, cheese whiz. 
<laughs> oh, that sounds delicious. Put that cheese, on. Cheese, crack cheese, dude. cheese is, is, is delicious. He was uh, starting to eat anyway. He was had financial problems. His own fault. Cobb County Police Chief Stuart Vanderhooser. That's a fucking name there. Vanderhooser. Uh, said the department is seeing an increase in violence like this, noting that since COVID, blaming violence on COVID, it, that's bullshit. There has been a sharp increase well, in violent crime. Uh, he's not poor anymore. No. The Waldens are still in a state of shock. <laughs> that violent crime literally happened next door. A SWAT van, uh, police cars. Why does this thing keep doing that? Uh, keeps jumping out of the story on me. Uh Oh, I hate that when the ads pop up. No, it jumped completely out of the story. Huh? He said uh, that the guy was in his late thirties. His daughter's around seven years old. She'll get over it. I'm sure her mom will find a new man, and everything will be great. Uh, <laughs> so, hey, we're triggering. I'm sorry. That's just my opinion. He sounded like a piece of shit. Uh, he was shooting at people. He could have killed all kind of people. He died. It's his own fault. Uh, the cops didn't shoot him. The AR-15s did. So you cannot blame the police. <laughs> so it was not the police that shot him. The AR-15s shot and killed him on their own. Anyway, and he's and he's McDead, he's McDead because they Mick shot him a lot. Yeah, and the daughter can get some McNuggets now because maybe her mom will find a man with a job. Uh, <laughs> Oh, all righty. On to our next story. This one is great. Go ahead. The happiest prison on earth. We yes. talked about New Orleans Parish Justice Center. OPP. Quite a lot. Yep. One inmate dead, two hospitalized after fight broke out in New Orleans Parish Justice Center. I think they were fighting over that last chocolate chip cookie. They didn't have enough. No, they were fighting over that Rice Krispie Treat. <laughs> Oh, rice Krispie treats are delicious. Yeah. I love New rice Orleans. Treats. Three inmates at the Orleans Parish Justice Center had to be hospitalized after a fight Friday night when John Wick broke out. Anyway. Uh, jo- really? John now, what, Wick? Did, or did you make no, it? I'm not reading it. <laughs> I'm not looking at it. It's like, <laughs> no, you really have somebody named with. John Wick? That's a cool fucking name, man. <laughs> yeah. Why would you fuck with a guy named John Wick? Don't He's going to beat your ass. Yeah. No, it don't say that. Uh, deputy said four inmates were wounded. After, now, they just said three. Now, it's four. Deputy said four inmates were wounded after a fight broke out Friday afternoon, but only three had to be taken to a hospital because the fourth fucked them up. One, <laughs> one of the inmates was critically wounded and died damn, Saturday afternoon. And the dog is crying for him. Their name has not been released by the sheriff's office. No information concerning why the folk bro- the fight broke out was released. That's because they were trying to stick it in as pooper. Uh, that's it. They better not Fuck be story fucking, over. Yeah, well, I think I have to put it on there because remember what she just said. We just played this a couple months ago when she took office on how oh, she yeah, was going to make be a safe she, she was going to make the jail the jail a safe place and, to rehabilitate people. They didn't know. When all these three fellas attacked this other guy, they did not know that he was a habitual watcher of Bruce Leroy. And he put, wait, wait, he put the Kung Fu hood down on their ass. You hear me? So, no, what was that What was that TV show I turned you on to? You're binge watching? Was it Re- Jack Reacher? No, I, yo, yeah, well, I finished that like in two days. If y'all ain't ever seen yeah, Jack, no, they, not, the, uh, not the movie. That was Jack it. Reacher. Reacher was in his cell, and they came in trying to put yeah, booty well, rope. If, uh, if, if I saw a guy like from the movie, now not the movies, Jack Reacher, the Amazon Prime <coughs> uh, series, y'all need to go watch it. It's freaking awesome. Uh, yeah, he's like seven foot two. Yeah, he he. Well, he portrays as like a seven foot tall guy that like has zero percent body fat and he's just a ginormous muscle man if that dude walked in my cell and i was a bad guy i'd be like hey friend do i need lotion (laughs) because you're not gonna fight this motherfucker i don't care how you had to be uh, you had to be a bad motherfucker (laughs) okay just saying just just saying but anyway it's an awesome fucking show y'all need to go watch it I, i recommend it Really, but this sheriff that just took over in Orleans, uh, their sheriff's office, basically. And, just, and we have to reiterate the fact that she was never a law enforcement never, no, officer. No, no, no. She, she was a private uh, Overwatch person yeah. that helped people prosecute police officers. Yeah, but she said she was going to make the jail a safe space. And uh, yeah, well, it ain't place. safe no more. No, no. So it must not be working. How's that working out for you, there, sheriff? Uh, <laughs> uh, not very well. 
It was funny. And this is I, why the only thing she's in charge of is a fucking jail. <laughs> it was funny when when we when I was not funny because I was at the funeral when I was at uh, Nick Two Gates funeral helping. I didn't even know Orleans Parish Sheriff's Office had motors cycles and like they had like six of them or four of them out there. And I'm like, I said, I looked at them. I was like, and they looked at me. I was like, Do they know? Do you know I've been talking shit about their boss? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, do they know? I'm like, they can't. Why, know. why do they have motors? I don't know. I didn't know they had them. But I was like, I was what? looking. I was like, God, cause we've been talking so much shit. I said, they're coming after me. No, I'm, I'm joking. I, how would they know? Of course, I do have Ice Man on the back of my helmet. <laughs> so. But, but what? I, I don't understand because they don't have. What do they patrol the jail? I guess it's just for parade purpose. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. This next story That's is fucking weird. I know. I, I I've been in motors twenty years. It's the first time I've seen them. I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, this next story is just as freaking hilarious. Really, is uh, out of Houston, Texas. You know uh, this poor fella here. Uh, he's a, a Houston YouTuber who uh, he raps. He's a rapper. Uh, he was recently arrested uh, for what? For robbing ATMs out of state. He was arrested this week for allegedly robbing an ATM technician in Tennessee. According to Nashville Police, Darius Dugas, 27 years old. Uh, so, can you know how to say that name? Uh, Sahandre Dugas, 32. Christopher Alton, 27. And Lede- oh, I wish people would just name their kids Ted and shit. Uh, Ladeason Riley, 30 were all arrested after checking out of a motel in Dixon, Tennessee. Riley, who uses the stage name on YouTube, recently... Sh- they ain't going to tell us what, what his stage name is. Uses a stage <laughs> name on YouTube, recently shared a music video called Make It Home. In the video... He did not make it home. Riley raps about frequently robbing ATM machines out of state. Uh, I'm going to... You, you got the story pulled up? I do. Well, you see where I'm at on it? Can you start reading? I'm going to see if I can pull this video up. Yes, he he has a rap song that says, My money doesn't jiggle jiggle. It folds. Anyway. Uh, the lyrics describe having thousands of dollars in their vehicle praying to avoid the chase and to make it home. If you're going to rap about it, then turn around and be about it and get caught. That's on you, said Douglas Griffin, president of the Houston Police Officers Union. You shouldn't do stupid crap, and you sh- you definitely shouldn't violate the law and talk about it, you dumbass. Authorities say four Texans approached an ATM technician from behind and told him, grab your ankles, I'm going in dry. Uh, no, they didn't. Uh, to not do anything stupid and to hand over the money. Later that day, Nashville Police, Dixon Police, the Tennessee Highway Patrol, and the Federal Bureau of Investigations violated Violent Crimes Task Force tracked down and arrested the four individuals. Online criminal records reveal at least two of the suspects were out of jail on felony bonds and had, you fucking dumbasses, and had been previously arrested several times. Convicted felons doing their music videos with guns, said Griffith. How dumb is that? That's right. There is enough for them to be charged again. Riley's stage name involves the word Jug God. You ready? It's un- <laughs> I got Go it. I found it. Okay. <laughs> but this could be in reference to jugging. Jugging is when burglars follow unsuspected victims home from the banks, malls, and restaurants to steal their leftover food. They want to glorify the fact that they are criminals, said Griffith. That saddens me. Because we have all of these kids watching this, and they're glorifying it. And these kids look up to them. It's dumb. These guys are dumb. They deserve to be tossed into a jail just for being dumb. Um, Because Biden says that they can't obtain licenses or vote. (laughs) Let me hit hit this audio. Here we go. (laughs) This, this This is the music. Make it home. You pop copyright. I don't care. Yeah, this that jug music right here. Gonna hit the road and get a.
Guess he didn't make it home. <laughs> I can't hear her, so you gotta let me know when it's over. Yeah, I'm I'm playing it. It's it's he said <laughs> it's it's they they like straight up rapping about the whole fucking entire crime. It's it's crazy. Oh, we got so make a bag. They know I'm the jug guard. Make niggas believe us out the jug when they was doing fraud. Call me Mr. Put it on, they know that I be staying clean. And it crossed the state line. So it's a little playing machines. Put up on their mix, yeah. He's the new Alexander McQueen. And anytime you see me on the scene, I got bands in my jeans. And if I go broke, the best believe is a trick up my sleeve. Find a bitch to get the rental, then you know it's time to leave. If you ain't trying to go get a bank roll. Then you ain't my kind of breed It's 150k up in this car Nigga, it ain't time to speed Make sure you use your signal When your lane switch it. When we get back with this money We can hide in the plane engine ha. Out of state this is running with the Florida place. I didn't hit the road and got that money and by 40 states. My nigga specialized in burglary. All right, that's good. That we ain't got to listen to this whole shit. Uh, he can rap about, uh, uh, instead of rapping about robbing ATMs, next time he can uh, rap about uh, how he was switching. He was sucking dick for a honey bun in jail. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's for his talking, ramen about, talking about his, his 50 bands and all this shit. Like, uh, it, what is it? The Mexicans. Don't they uh, have people that sing about crimes of the cartel and stuff like that? Ain't that a thing with them? Oh, yeah. But, but then so, again, so now the, the cartel is a big ass industry. Yeah. So, so the, these people here are uh, just, it's fucking stupid. <laughs> They're so stupid. Uh, he don't even sound like that bad of a rapper. I do enjoy rap music, but, but why would you do something stupid like that? And, well, to me, uh, I like the old school rap music way more than new because the news just, uh, most people are using auto tune, which I could fucking rap with auto tune. Uh, oh, hell, this next sheriff's office is doing shit like my local Pasco County Sheriff's Office <laughs> and not responding to calls. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, th- these guys are stupid. They could have possibly had a career doing this, but instead they want to. Act like fucking idiots and go rob shit now. Uh, they didn't committed like People. like old Stara said. They could have committed federal offenses because they crossed state lines while doing this. So uh, hopefully they all go to jail for a very long time, and he can rap about that one. Oh, well, yeah, especially the ones that were out on bond are getting fucked for yeah, the rest of their life. Yeah, yeah, because it's just the habitual offenders. No, it, it is like okay, look, you might have actually gotten away with committing the crime if you just shut the fuck up. Why? Why do bad guys have the uh, why do they continuously well, open their mouth? Well, if bad guys were smart, we wouldn't have anybody in jail, would we? No. No. You going to read this next one or am I going to read it? Uh, You can start it. Since we're doing a live uh, live thing, uh, I know you don't have any videos to show, so you can't get out of shit this time. I'm not trying to get out of nothing. I just was reading the other one. I just stopped and let you finish <laughs> it so I could go find a music video. <laughs> Deputies taking some calls by phone to save on fuel cost. Michigan Sheriff says the agency said it has exhausted its fuel budget and has months to go before the budget is renewed. That sounds like a Pasco County Sheriff's Office statement. Isabella County, Michigan, many motorists are feeling the pain at the pump these days, including deputies with the Isabella County Sheriff's Office. And so they're going to start working from home. In a Facebook post, the agency said it has drained its fuel budget and will be months before that budget is renewed. As a result, deputies will no longer be responding to certain calls in person, the agency said. I've said that for years. I think there's non-emergency bullshit that you could just take a report over the phone. Um, instead, deputies will be taking reports over the phone for non-life-threatening calls. Calls that are not crimes in progress and calls that don't require evidence documentation. Well, a lot, of civil, matters, still, a lot of civil matters. Right. Like, that. like look, my, my, my ex-wife didn't bring in, drop the kid off on time when she's supposed to, and she's not answering the phone. I don't need to come out and physically do that for that. I can take your statement over the phone and write, right. a, report, and write a report on it. I don't have to. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of bullshit like that 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 we deal with that you don't have to go out. Yeah, and it does happen. I mean, like uh, like I stated before, the uh, the non injury accidents and shit, short form. You could freaking write that shit without going out, as long as nobody was injured. Um, so, in a Facebook post, the agency said it has drained its fuel budget and will be months before that budget is renewed. As a result. 
deputies will no longer be responding to certain calls in person, the agency said. Instead, deputies will be taking reports over the phone for non-life-threatening. I think I just read this part. Uh, it don't require evidence documentation. Deputies will still provide patrols and will respond to calls in progress that involve active suspects. The Post said gas prices in the area reached a record high this week at $5.19 per gallon. We're going to switch our police officers to bicycles. That'll get all the fat ones in shape. Or, I'm just kidding. Or they can just get on. Uh, <coughs> they'll just get like a little electric scooters. There you go. Give them, uh, what are they, the Segways. Yeah, those are cool, too. They're fun to drive. Yep. But, but yeah, yeah that's, that's the end of it. But So they can't defund the police, but they'll degas the police. <laughs> They're definitely defunded. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, this next one uh, out of California. Cause I don't know if y'all know that uh, district attorney uh, in Los Angeles has uh, been recalled. Just the one that's been just like light on crime, not prosecuting people, letting people out of jail and stuff like that. No. Yeah, well, they actually have. I didn't even know you could still go to jail in California. Well, they recalled his ass because people are like, hey, man, what the fuck? <laughs> it's getting bad. A California gang member who is uh, facing a murder charge was heard on a jailhouse phone call recording saying he needs to cut a quick plea deal with Los Angeles County District Attorney George Gascon's office in case the effort to recall him is, is success, successful, <laughs> which, which it was. The gang member, Willie Wilkerson, has been charged with murder in the fatal shooting of 21-year-old Elijah Martin. Martin was gunned down during a home invasion robbery in Lancaster in February of 2021. He has also been charged with two counts of attempted murder for wounding two more victims in the same attack. During a jailhouse phone call to his mother on May 31st, which is not privileged uh, information and they can listen to your shit, uh, the gang member was heard telling her about his defense lawyer's plan to score him a lenient plea deal. The call was made immediately after a Wilkerson, uh, his court hearing. I told you last time that that uh, his defense attorney want to hurry up and try to get something did before they reelect someone else besides Gascon and bring back that bullshit life without parole and death penalty. <laughs> yeah, it's bullshit. They won't put me in jail for the rest of my life. All I did was kill one person and shoot two other uh, <laughs> during his phone call. If he could get manslaughter, then sh- if, if he could get me some manslaughter, then shit. The murder suspect continued. Manslaughter only cast six to nine in 12 years. Under California law, uh, Wilson could face multiple sentencing enhancements that could have dramatically increased his prison time to include using a firearm and the commission of offense being a member of a gang and special circumstances enhancement. Oh, yeah, he's doing life. For murdering someone during the commission of an armed robbery. But when Gascon took office in December of 2020, he immediately ordered his prosecutors to stop utilizing enhancements in an overwhelming majority of cases, regardless of the heinous of the offense. Uh, he also barred prosecutors from pushing for life sentences without the possibility of parole in all cases, further benefiting accused killers like the dirtbag we're talking about. If you're a violent criminal in Los Angeles right now, your biggest ally is not your defense attorney. It is the judge. It's not the jury. It's not the judge. It's not the jury. Los Angeles County, County Association of Deputy District Prosecute. Attorney said it's the prosecutor. <laughs> It's George Gascon. That's who your biggest supporter is, he said. That's the reason why criminal defendants all throughout Los Angeles County want George Gascon to give them a deal because they know he is their biggest cheerleader. Is he the asshole that pretty much decriminalized the, like, uh, grand theft? Yes. I, he's just, just, it's just been, it's chaos. <coughs> crime in Los Angeles County has surged under his progressive soft on crime policies, leading to him currently facing his second recall attempt, which was successful. Uh, they collected. They over, need to get rid of that Newsom guy. Yeah, they collected over five hundred thousand signatures of registered voters to recall this motherfucker. Uh, the group needs to only just collect sixty-seven thousand more by July sixth in order to recall, be eligible, which they successfully did. The potential recall gained even more momentum Tuesday after San Francisco voters voted overwhelmingly to recall. Recall progressive San Francisco district attorney. Oh, yeah, the one in San Francisco got recalled. <laughs> Good. I, uh, I see, and when they did it to Newsom, I swear they, they 
successfully did it, and Newsom fucking cheated. He's okay. he just barely skated that one. But anyway, the uh, it, it just shows you right there the, the fucking murdering pieces of shit are like I, they they. This is the reason why they had such a surge in crime because the bad guys know, hey, they're not going to put us in jail, or if I do, I'm only going to I can kill somebody and go to jail for five years and get back out. It's no big deal. So that's why. Well, you know who's you know whose area that is. That's Nancy Pelosi's. <laughs> well, well, go figure. On that matter, uh, I did read an article. I was going to save it for the other one, but I can mention it that uh, the. Uh, District attorney over there in the the sheriff's office is refusing to release the body cam footage of his arrest. I wonder why. As well, well I, I said on the they other dropped, one, they dropped the charges. It's called you know why political White, privilege. Or, no or, political, or political privilege. Political privilege. That's what that is. PP. Privilege. Yep. Uh, <laughs> political privilege. So. But not only that, I knew something was up the minute he got out on a Sunday on Memorial Day weekend. Everybody knows if you go to jail. On Memorial Day weekend, you don't get to see the judge till Tuesday. How the fuck did he get out? Yep. That's called political privilege. Cause me and you would be sitting up in that bitch till Tuesday at the minimum. Yep. Uh, you want to read the next one since it's out of Florida? Of course. It's one of my people. Yep, your people. It's weird because the image shows up twice. All right. I swear your dog likes to hear me read, because every time I start reading, he cries. No, I got the Duke inside, and he's, he's whining because he's wanting me to pet him on the head. <laughs> two Florida children cut power to a gun store, steal 22 guns and ammunition before being arrested. Little greedy bastards. Orlando Sentinel. whole lot of crime coming out of Orlando this week. Two Florida children were arrested Wednesday after authorities said they burglarized a business, stealing 22 guns and ammunition, according to authorities. At around 3 a.m., Cape Coral police responded to a call about a commercial burglary at the store. Guns for less. And the suspect said, well, less means more. Uh, Anyway, police arrested two brothers, an 11-year-old and a 14-year-old, who will be out next week. Who were near the store? Green said officers reportedly saw the children running from the store armed with multiple handguns, ammunition, magazines, and long guns. Green said, uh, When the boys realized officers were on the scene, they ran in two different directions, dropping some of what they were carrying. According to Green, the boys broke into the store after cutting the power and then forced their way in through the back. Put that doggy on the head. Smashing display cases and stealing 22 guns and rifles, along with magazines and ammunition. Both children face multiple charges, including 22 counts of grand theft of a firearm, armed burglary, criminal mischief of over $1,000, resisting without violence, grand theft, and possession of burglary tools. I guarantee you they don't serve a year in jail. The 14-year-old boy was charged with an additional violation of probation. What the fuck? Do you think they passed the background check? Well, I, the thing that bothers me is the fourteen-year-olds out on fucking probation. Yeah, my thing is, is they keep wanting to pass all these gun reform laws. Uh, do you think these uh, these stolen weapons were? That's how people get weapons. Gun it is important that our listeners know uh, if you're not in Florida, uh, Orange County in Orlando is the home of Disney. It is an extremely liberal part of our state. You have a couple liberal pockets. You've got Miami-Dade. You've got Orlando. uh, I'll venture to say Tampa is pretty liberal, along with St. Petersburg. And then you got, you know, Tallahassee and stuff like that. Um, But Orlando is the home of Disney. So they had some very liberal prosecutors and shit like that, and that's why the crime over there is skyrocketing. So, but that's why... laugh at gun laws because criminals don't care about laws it only hurts uh law-abiding people and oh yeah this next story we're still in florida it's a a man threw a hot cup of coffee all over a 76 year old man making him wait to pay in a store is facing assault charges after punching the older man sending him (laughs) to the ground security footage of the attack in the shell gas station on in palm coast florida shows the gray-haired victim at the checkout with the suspect later identified as Sean Rule, as 39 years old, standing in line behind him. Rule can be seen waiting 
to be served while the 76-year-old man is being seen by the cashier. After a few seconds, the suspect can see can be seen apparently losing his temper at having to wait, and he throws his cup of coffee towards the victim, where it lands at the man's feet, catching his attention. The suspect then leaves the gas station with his victim, eventually following him outside to confront him, but security footage shows he barely manages a word before Roll races up to him and knocks him down with a punch to the jaw. The blow to the victim sent flying and left him sprawled on the ground as the footage ends. Just before the footage cuts out, other people can be seen coming to the aid of the old man who was not who has not been named, including a man with a white beard who appears to have witnessed the incident and have who could have been seen helping the victim. A woman can also be seen exiting the gas station moments before the footage ends. The county sheriff's office later identified the suspect as Rule Ruel, however you say his name, who was arrested the next day and accused of battery of a senior over sixty five. Looks like a fucking hate crime to me. Yeah, because this guy couldn't control his anger, he battered a senior citizen. It's lucky he did not seriously injure him. Uh, Deputies did a great job in identifying, locating him, and arresting him. And then, of course, we won't tolerate it, blah, 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 blah. Uh, First of all, uh, what I'd like to see is uh, somebody, uh, this piece of shit guy, 39 years old, beating up on this old man like that. Uh, Wish somebody... He should have caught a bullet. Oh yeah. This day. You know, yeah, I mean, we're in the gunshine state. Yeah, I mean, he's lucky he didn't. Seventy-six year old man. I mean, he's a real fucking tough guy. And I, I, if I had, if I had to think of picture, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, that's like me beating up on the ice man. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I may, I may be fifty-one right now, but uh, as you know, from fact, I'm not that small of a guy. Uh, but it's just. Yeah, if you're a younger guy, especially 39, and you're going to attack. I guarantee if that would have been me standing there or or somebody like Holstera standing there or, or Freebird. Oh, I, I would have fucking I, been all well, over him like well, a spider monkey. F- first of all, first of all, he would have never done that. The only reason he did that is because it was an old man he figured he could take. A piece of shit coward like this ain't going to fight somebody he thinks it might give him a fight back or whip his ass. I would have had him in a choker hold until the fucking sheriff showed up. So, uh, he, uh, just, just a piece of shit right there. Uh, uh, there's th- oh, you gotta be fucking shitting me. Yeah. This, ne- this <laughs> next story is fucking stupid. <laughs> Go ahead, read it. All right. Chicago police officers shooting of a 13 year old carjacking suspect is under investigation. No weapon was recovered, the city police accountability office said. Well, the little fucker was stealing a fucking car. And inve- I have an idea. Don't break the law. Don't get fucking shot. I, I don't realize how fucking complicated this is for these idiots. Don't resist. And it, an investigation is underway after a Chicago police officer shot a 13-year-old boy during a foot pursuit who authorities allege, uh, there we go, allegedly, was involved in two recent carjackings. I really hope he witnessed him trying to steal a car before he shot him in the back. Oh, God. Yeah, he might be fucked. The incident occurred Wednesday night on the city's west side. Police tracked the license plate of a vehicle stolen two days earlier in Chicago to the area shortly after 10 p.m. According to Chicago Police Superintendent David Brown, as officers attempted to stop the vehicle, okay, so he was in possession of a stolen vehicle. The teenager got out of the vehicle and fled as several officers pursued him on foot. I thought they weren't allowed to do that. Uh, maybe the uh, subject was with him. I don't know. Oh, so he was a supervisor. There we go. The subject flees to a gas station parking lot and turns toward the officer. Brown told reporters during a brief a briefing Thursday, the officer then discharged his weapon, striking the individual once. Good shot. Wait. Officers rendered first aid and moved the boy away from the nearby gas pumps due to high gas prices. No. Um, <laughs> he, didn't due to him the, he didn't shoot him in the back. No, he turned, and then he shot him in the front. Um, and this that's why that, you always got to say, hey, bro, and when they turn around, you plow. And, and this, anyway, was, this was at night, though, right? Yeah. Dang, okay. It was, well, no, it was early as fuck in the morning, I thought, right? Well, I don't know. Uh-huh. No, yeah, it was after 10 p.m., so it was at night. 
Uh, officers rendered first aid and moved the boy away from the nearby gas pumps due to concerns over the possibility of explosion. Uh, send her to voicemail and go back to the story. Uh, shit. Either way. Um, they said they didn't find their weapon. Yeah, they didn't find any weapons or anything like that, but he was in possession of a stolen vehicle. Did he have a cell phone or anything in his hand? I'm not sure. I got to go back to it. Well, I'm looking at it right now. It says the officer's body-worn camera was on at the time of the shooting, according to Brown. Uh, Third-party footage of the incident. Uh, they were unable to release any video of the shooting because it involved a juvenile. In the fatal shooting of, uh, are you talking about the Toledo boy? Uh, we can now draw conclusions to the investigation. Uh, anyway, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, it don't say if he had a cell phone or anything. I mean, when he turned around, did he like make a motion like he had a gun or anything like I that? I would assume he they, had to do something. They had he had to do something to make this uh, make this this cop fires weapon. Is what I'm thinking. Uh, first of all, what are 13 year olds out doing stealing cars and shit like that? They, you know, I mean, come on, he's 13 years old. Uh, I blame this on parents again. So, oh, bullshit. Witnesses said several witnesses told Chicago ABC station that a teen had his hands up before he was shot. I don't, I, I don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe stuff until I see it. Just from the Michael Brown, right? And the the recent pregnant black girl, she had her hands. The witnesses said she had her hands up too, and the video shows she was pointing a gun at the cops. So, I take these witness statements as is about you know. Well, yeah, not only that, I mean, put it this way. If it was on body cam that they, in regards, shot this child with his hands in the air, he wouldn't be investigated. He'd be in fucking jail. Yeah, so I I don't know. This is Chicago we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, This next story is an ex-deputy gets 18 years after the detainees he had in his uh, locked van drowned. Uh, what? Yeah, a deputy in South Carolina whose police van was swept away by floodwaters in the aftermath of a hurricane drowning. Two women seeking medical health treatment trapped in a cage in the back was sentenced Thursday to 18 years in prison. The Marion County jury found former <coughs> Horry County Deputy Stephen Flood. That's ironic that Stephen Flood got convicted for driving in a flood. Uh, <laughs> He's like, I got this. That's why I'm named this. Guilty of two counts of involuntary manslaughter and two counts of reckless homicide. The judges ordered Wendy Newton, 45, and Nicolette Green, 43, to be involuntarily committed the day they died. But their family said they were not violent. Newton was only seeking medication for her fear of anxiety. Uh, Probably a lie. She was probably a dopehead. And uh, Green's family said she was uh, committed to a mental facility at a regular mental health appointment by a counselor she had never seen before floods he had anxiety about the thought of maybe yeah. drowning one day flood 70 years old so this is a life sentence for this man was sentenced about 30 minutes after the verdict and after several relatives of the woman said his decision to press forward with the shortest route left and impossible to fix hole in their lives this man's 70 years old this was a deliberate act set in motion by a pompous, stubborn man, Green's sister, Donnell Green Johnson, told the judge. He abused the trust of my sister, Nikki, uh, Wendy, and the state of South Carolina entrusted with him, and for what? To save time. Uh, Circuit Judge William Seal sentenced Flood to five years in prison on each inv- involuntary manslaughter charge and four years for each reckless homicide. I don't see how they do that. If you're going to convict somebody of killing somebody, how can you convict convict them on two things for killing one person? I, I don't understand how that works. Well, if they allow it to run concurrent, it's not going to fucking matter. It'll uh, just serve the five years. No, in order sentence be served back to back. Fuck. Yeah. He's dead. Yeah, he, it's a life sentence for him. The floodwater swept the police van off its wheels and pinned it against a guardrail, preventing the women from being able to get out of the sliding door they used to enter the van. Flood and Flood and Deputy 
Though the guy's name's Flood and another deputy with him did not have a key to the second door and there was no emergency escape hatch. Why wouldn't they have a key to all the doors on the van? Because I could tell you that because then they might be, uh, they'll let them help them break out. Well. They, I've seen it happen. They've got a key when they put them in and the only other person that has a key is the receiving facility. Well, that's stupid. In, in particular, in that case, that defense attorney should be able to say it didn't matter whether they were on dry land or wet land. They didn't have a fucking key, so they can't be charged for it. Whoever made that decision forced that to happen. The deputy said they spoke to a woman and tried to keep them calm for about an hour as the water kept rising before it got too dangerous and rec- rescuers could no longer hear them. How awful must it have been to sit there and wait for your own death? Uh while other factors like an emergency radio that failed to notify rescuers of the van's exact location contributed to the death, Clements said the drownings all came out of Flood's reckless decision to drive two miles through water. Uh, if I'd have seen the road covered with water like that personally, I'm not downing on it. I don't know what went through this man's mind, but uh, I wouldn't have drove. Yep. I wouldn't have drove through it. Uh, but your last name ain't Flood. Well, that's true. National Guard's troops put up barricades on U.S. Highway 76. Just out of news. He drove around the barricades. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. No, never mind. It's his fault. Uh, he felt like once he was in the water, he could not turn around because he could no longer see the edge of the roadway and was worried about running into a ditch. Maybe it wounded his pride or stubbornness, but I don't know. He pushed forward into water. That was just... Uh, that was not just a standing in a tall puddle, but it was rushing across the guardrail. What state is this? South Carolina. Which Carolina? It's in one of the South or North. I think it's South Carolina. Well, see, I mean, like in the in the deep south, like down here, and you know as well as I do. No, you don't do that shit. No, because said, the road could be completely washed out. Yeah. Flood and deputy with him, so they were eventually rescued from the top of the transport van. Uh, Said so the guy with him will stay in counts for two counts of involuntary manslaughter. Okay, he wasn't driving. But it's his fault, too. Okay. Uh, they tried to shoot the locks off the second door, but it would not open. The delay in getting help was costly, too. A firefighter testified they were able to cut the roof off the van and started working on the cage, but the water got higher and faster, and it was too dangerous to continue. Uh I mean, it sounds like they did everything they could, but yeah, that was a bad fucking decision. Well, if if he was driving down the road and thought, didn't know that the water was covering the road for that far, but the National Guard was out there and they put up barricades to block the road off and say, no, it's too dangerous, and he went around the barricades anyway and did it, yeah, he's definitely negligent. But, uh, so... I don't know the 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 guy that was with him. Why are they charging him? He could have told the guy, "Hey, don't go do that. We shouldn't do this." He he wasn't in control of the vehicle, but they're going to charge him also. I, I don't agree. Yeah. I don't agree with charging the other deputy that was not driving the vehicle. He was not. In control I mean, of I, he he could. Uh, what the hell they call that? I'm sorry, thoroughly. Not contested, but. Uh, Damn, I can't remember. I just oh, he could appeal the decision. Yeah, I don't agree. Them charging the uh, the the other deputy, he wasn't driving the vehicle. The man driving the vehicle got sense. He's the one that made the decision to do that. And I guarantee he had a lot more time. And then the other one, the other one, just you know, he listened to what the senior deputy said. So, uh, go ahead with the next story. <laughs> now, this next one, written by Law and Crime, is definitely a. Uh, this is this is somebody. That takes after us. Public enemy number two. Wichita woman accused of pooping on beauty store wigs is allegedly a serial fecal offender. Police punned persistently in soliciting the public's help in locating public enemy number two. The alleged perpetrator of serial defecation inside a Kansas beauty store earlier this month. The (laughs) The defecation was significant, Kansas authorities wrote. The post on Twitter and Facebook about the unique case quickly went viral. In separate updates, the Wichita Police Department said the woman had since been identified but did not release her name. The alleged incident, here we go, allegedly incident occurred in a wig aisle 
of the Mid K Beauty Supply Store on May 10th, 2022. The business owner and the police claimed that several wigs were damaged to the tune of several hundred dollars. Law enforcement used a scat scatological humor throughout their numerous social media posts about the incident. The defecation was significant enough that eight wigs were destroyed as a result, and the business would like to know who the perpetrator is so they can pursue criminal charges, the WPD wrote via Twitter. The public bowl released, oh, release is said to have been caught on the store's surveillance camera footage. Uh, law enforcement declined to release the footage. They said out of respect for certain norms and committee. The incident was captured on video surveillance, but the good of, uh, for the good of all of you, we are not posting the footage of the offending fecal assault. The police department, the police department wrote in the post the alleged woman responsible was shown fully clothed and standing in two still images pulled from the footage presumably taken before or after the offender's incident she didn't even wipe her ass before being identified the woman was referred to by the wpd as public enemy number two uh social media comments on the post particularly the facebook post was rife Many users made jokes about Amber Heard, <laughs> who was <laughs> he was alleged to have soiled the bed at one point during her relationship with Johnny Depp. Uh, Heard has denied the claim, blaming it on her Yorkshire Terrier with bowel control problems from consuming Depp's cannabis. Even though a UK judge credited Heard's alibi, Depp's supporters did not circulating the hashtag pound me poo and pound Amber Turd. On Twitter, Wichita police pronounced her innocent of the Kansas City incident. <laughs> We've already confirmed that that is not Amber Heard. So please stop calling and emailing that info. The WPD said on the Facebook comment, honing in on uh, Zeit just of poop theme chatter. Thanks. I believe the surveillance footage and the evidence left behind helped discover what had occurred. WPD officers Trevor Macy told Newsweek, at this time, it's believed to have been intentional. Macy told the news magazine the woman is believed to have caused $200 worth of damage during the May 10th incident. According to the Wichita Eagle, the woman is believed to be a serial offender. Uh, the woman performed the same extreme act at yet another mid k beauty supply later the next day. The WPD told the paper, citing the manager of the first store who allegedly said she had done this at another store in the area. The officer went on to uh, allay concerns as to whether or not she simply needed some last minute toilet paper. She did not, he said, because the wigs were displayed behind a wall. She decided to use them for her toilet paper. The wigs had to be destroyed, the officer added. A motive for the alleged acts was not immediately clear. We'll have to talk with her about that, Macy told the Eagle. Criminal charges are currently being considered. Considered? She just Amber Heard it all over the fucking aisle. I'm just glad they were able to uh, locate these wigs because somebody could have bought it and worn it, and then somebody said, man, that sure is a shitty wig you got on. <laughs> it's a shitty wig. That's a shit hairdo. Uh God, you know, are you having a shitty day? I mean, who's this no, woman? But does she, does she like, can she, is she like some kind of like superhero? It's like the shitinator that can just shit on command. It's like, <laughs> it's like she just like drops her drawers and bends over and it's like, oh, shitinator to you and just like explosive diarrhea and just blows it out of her ass or something like that. I mean, Jesus Christ. Uh, she kinda, bends over and sneezes and just shoots the load. I mean, what, what the fuck kind of sick ass? I mean, what? Jesus Christ! But she, that's just a sick individual. I'd been. You know, I'm sorry, but whoever wrote that funny motherfucker. Yeah, that's a that's the the shittinator. Uh, it, it is definitely not a shitty story. I'll tell you that. It's extremely shitty. <laughs> so, if you don't leave me alone, I'm going to call the shittinator for you. And she ate corn last night, cream style. So. <laughs> How do you know? I can see it. 
Well, on to our last story. Uh, this next one is not really that funny. It's actually pretty messed up. Uh, it's out of Mississippi. A woman is accused of murdering her infant daughter, Michaela Shailen Jolie, 20 years old, repeatedly and forcibly threw her eight-week-old daughter uh, on a road, said police in Pearl, Mississippi. She initially, the babies initially survived the injuries, but she died Saturday. Officer said now the attempted murder charge against her mother will be upgraded to capital murder, cops said. Several 911 calls came in the Pearl uh, Police Department at 2 p.m. Thursday back in May, saying uh, a woman had repeatedly and forcibly thrown a baby on the roadway on uh, 775 North Bridman Road, uh, they arrived to find another woman holding the badly injured baby. They said first responders applied first aid immediately and took her to the Children's Hospital of Mississippi in Jackson. Uh, she was initially in critical condition. Uh, we shut down the city of Pearl down, police said, according to that. She was uh, heavily escorted, I'd say that. She died Saturday, 4.33 p.m. Uh, authorities said that the, the defendant, uh, the mother, fled into the nearby Woods upon arrival, but officers arrested her. She also was charged with felony child abuse and scheduled for court Tuesday. Surveillance footage shows her running through a trailer park around the time cops got called. Uh, I'm trying to see if they have anything. Uh, they don't say what. I mean, the victim of a very cruel and intentional abuse by her mother. I would encourage people on Facebook. The Facebook judge and to feel sympathy for the victim, of course. It's a baby. Uh, the, she was a frequent flyer. The uh, narcotics unit knew her very well. Well, that, yeah, it just, it don't really, it just, she sounds like she's a dope head and uh, she killed her yeah. eight week old child, probably <coughs> jonesing or something yeah. like that. This piece of shit woman here needs to. Uh, well, they are seeking the death penalty. I think they should let that old man out of jail and let him uh, drive across the river with her in the back. Yeah, uh, young girl. A picture of her up here, a piece of shit. Uh, anyway, killed that innocent child. But that's going to be all for the stories for this Wednesday. And, uh, I'm going to go ahead since we we don't have a live audience. So my vote for the hot nuts is the uh, number two chick. Yes, that's me too. We're going to give the hot nuts to the poopinator. Uh, yep, the poopinator. Poopinator. She win. is winning. I don't have the hot nut you pulled up, but she gets the hot nuts. No, you're good. And uh, anyway, I hope everybody's having a good week. I uh, hope y'all enjoyed the Tuesday episode of uh, Louisiana Crime Number Five that uh, put out and. Uh, I'll be, uh, and uh, the Iceman will be going live during the uh, the rodeo and showing y'all some video. Yeah, tomorrow. Them out there doing their little tricks. It'll be tomorrow after this comes out is the day of the rodeo. So uh, I will be putting up videos of other people competing, not myself, of course. Uh, yep. I will be competing, but I'm anonymous, remember? So uh, y'all go tune in uh, or pay attention to that on Facebook. Uh, uh, it'll be up and uh, be doing that during the day. Probably some of the... Uh, awards meant banquet thing that night. I'm sure I won't be winning any, but some other people. Y'all take and care, and we'll see it. you next week. Yeah, be safe. Uh, watch your back. Watch your partner's back, and uh, remember to smile because the uh, ice man could always I'm be behind slow you. Up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play toss and wanna hate this, I'll always show up. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. Everything I do, so instinctive and so passionate. Every word I move, so descriptive like an adjective. I got a vendetta against people who patented it. Being negative when you should be getting after it. I got facts over facts over tracks, this and that, spitting slow, spitting fast. I can roast, I can gas, think I'm okay at last, but I don't know if that can erase all the past and the pettiness.